this video, I'll discuss some of the things you need to take all the time to maximise the chances of you being able to find a place that you can get on air from. That's without taking a bulky squid pole or kite. You might be walking through a park and see an ice tree with a high bough that's in the clear that you can easily throw something over. Or maybe if you're down at the beach, there's a tall pole that's right on the waterfront with some screws down at the bottom that you can just clip your lead to and be on the air in seconds. Items handy to take along include some wire, as thin as possible for the antenna element or ground radials. Some clips to clip onto metal objects, such as this car battery clip, or for larger things like railings, this G-clamp. And, not pictured, some fishing line would be good, as would this sinker, in case you need to throw something over a tree. Sandpaper may be handy if the contacts you're trying to touch onto are corroded or dirty. Another thing that's really important is an antenna coupler. Unless you're using an exact quarter wavelength of wire, you will need this to match whatever you're trying to load up. Personally, I favour a simple manual antenna coupler like an L-Match. Some QRPers do use automatic ones, but they cost a lot more, they need batteries, and they don't necessarily match as wide a range of impedances as a simple homebrew job. I've seen cases where commercially made automatic antenna couplers have been unable to match an NFED half-wave antenna, which this particular unit does with ease. All this sounds good in theory, but let's go for a walk, see if we can find anything to load up, get on air and see if anyone can actually hear us. This looks promising, it's about a quarter wavelength tall on 20 metres and with an over the water outlook it should produce some quite good results. All I'd need are one or two wire radials which I can scatter over the rocks. I could load this up reasonably well on all frequencies between 7 and 28 megahertz. It's a little bit shorter than desired on 7 megahertz, but given the local activity, it should be possible to make at least a few contacts. I don't know, um, I've looked I've got you south of Melbourne, I've got your name, but I haven't got your call sign. I know it's VK3. Can you repeat the call sign, please? Uh, QRZ, VK2, Quebec Alpha. Yeah, negative copy, Peter, I'm sorry to say, negative copy. This pole is a lot shorter, only about two and a half metres tall. But that's a quarter wave on 10 metres and should be reasonably efficient above 21 megahertz. Another benefit is there's some railings of the pier that I can attach my earth to. VK3 Yankee Echo, QRB Portable. VK7 NWT. Yeah, OK, I've got the two and a half metre vertical. OK, five watts, got it, Peter. Thanks, mate. That's a confirmed contact. I won't hold it. It's real difficult. Lovely, uh, fickle. Cooper, whatever you're the hearing. Yankee Echo. Japan Radio, Seven Tokyo, Kentucky Go. And the name is Osaki, Santiago, America, Kilo, India. KTH, Northern Japan. You are picking a 5x4, 5x4 at the QS Baker. Oh, you are QRP special, 5 watts, uh, I understand. Well, that wasn't very successful. Only a couple of stations, and I couldn't even get my call sign across. Though, in both cases, they could hear that someone was there. That shows that antennas you find on the spur of the moment may not necessarily give the best performance. Or you might be unlucky and conditions were poor, as I think they were this morning. Still, it's worth trying for the unexpected joy you might get of working DX. If you want to make the most of low power amateur radio, you need minimum QRP. It's a Kindle ebook available for under $5 US. 
just search in Amazon.com or go to my website, vk3ye.com, and click on the link. And there's a BXP shell wave in that thing, just time. Nothing, just time.